Let's go ahead and mask off uh, the fretboard because when we spray the tint, uh, we do not want to get that or the finish on the top of the fretboard on a dark wood, basically, on a rosewood or ebony. Uh, you want the natural oils to be there, then you're going to treat it with lemon oil or something like that. Um, so let's go ahead and mask it off. I'll start on one end and I'll drop, ride this as close to the edge as I possibly can see. And I'll press it into the frets on either side. So that's why I have to work from one side down and get one fret and then the other fret and get it flat in between. You don't want finish leaking underneath because that'll be a pain to clean up. So the tighter, and the closer to the edge that you can make this, the better off you're gonna be. Also would like this tape to go inside of the nut slot because I do not want any finish getting in there. However, finish on the uh, headstock side of the fretboard is perfectly fine and finish on the sides of the fretboard is actually desirable uh, because it's really hard to stop it at a precisely the point of the maple to the fretboard. So you just do the edges of the fretboard and everything is fine. So I will just press that extra tape that I had firmly and squarely into that slot. And then I'll use this little scraper as a backstop to take my razor blade right along the edge. You probably want a close-up of the masking. So there's the nut. And we try to go as tight to the frets as possible. So this would be ready for the tinting uh, process. Now, I don't necessarily need to tint this edges of the fretboard. It doesn't make a big difference one way or the other. Um, I do have my fret dot markers. And if I do tint those and I don't tint the ones on the top, that will change the characteristics of it. So I'm going to go ahead and also mask off the side of the fretboard only for the tinting coat. And then I'm going to open it back up uh, for the final clear coats. Now when masking off the edges of the fretboard, I... I place the tape so I can see a sliver of the fretboard. And that way, the dye, the tint coat will overlap the dark fretboard a little bit and it will be fine. If you were short and a little bit of that bright white maple was visible, that would be apparent. Uh, so that's why we do it this way. So let's go back to the one that we've dyed. All right, if we look at that, in fact, and you can see the curly maple, And we're gonna knock that back some with that 400 grit Scotch-Brite pad. Now we're gonna go back and put another coat of dye on top and see if we can't enhance that grain just a little bit more. If it's not quite as intense as I want it, um, then I may tint at least one coat of tint, maybe kind of slightly uh, diluted, but I may do that. We'll see.
It's starting to really pop now. I don't think I'm gonna need a tint coat on this guy. I think just a good old fashioned clear coat is gonna get this right where I need it to be. Much, much more vibrant curl. All right, again, we will let this dry. Meantime, I'm gonna go back and mask off my other necks. Now, I say necks because I still have to do the masking on this one also. But the one I do not have to mask is this one piece maple. Why is that, Steve? Well, it's because we want the tint to be all over the top of this maple fretboard too. Maple's about one of those fret, um, fretboard woods that you really need to seal or it's gonna get nasty really fast. Uh, but we all want it to be the same color of vintage amber and that's what we're gonna do on this whole thing. So I really don't have to mask off anything maybe other than the fret slot itself, because again, we don't want to build that fret slot um, with finish, um, because then we're just going to have to file or sand it away anyway. So I'll go ahead and mask that off, and I'll go ahead and mask off my truss rod adjustment um, spoke wheel right there in the uh, 20, uh, 20 second fret. Continuing the talk on necks. Okay, remember we dyed the flamed maple neck, and now I just sprayed three sealer coats on there, and it is really popping. I'm gonna give you a close-up of some of these, but really popping nice. So it's ready for top coat, and I'll do three uh, coats of regular top coat, and then I have to make a choice whether I'm gonna do satin on some or all of these necks. Generally, I prefer the satin neck, or if I'm gonna do high gloss, because I really want the bling factor. And honestly, as long as the, uh, the gloss is properly uh, sanded and buffed out, it won't be that sticky, but the satin is a little bit slippery, feels a little bit faster to play. Uh, so, we have to go for performance or aesthetics, and I'll make that choice up. I'm probably gonna do most of them satin, but this curly maple, I may do gloss because it just looks so amazing. Now these other three necks, we did tinting, right? So we added the aniline dye to the sealer coat, and actually it only took the very first sealer coat to get the color that I wanted, and then I added two clear coats on top of that. So we've got the two telly necks, Right here, there's the back, there's the front. The beautiful thing about the tinting process is you do not get blotchiness in the wood because it is only coloring the finish, it's not coloring the wood. And so it's very smooth, very consistent all the way on the back of the neck. And that's what I love so much about the tinting process. The only exception, as we discussed earlier, was the curly maple neck because I wanted to hand dye it in order to try to do multiple coats and really bring out uh, that, uh, that cool looking grain there. So that was the only difference. The one piece maple, we certainly did uh, that with the tinting process and we were able to tint the front and the back all at the same time so therefore we have consistency all the way throughout that neck right there let's give you some close-up of these there's the one piece maple with the uh, spoke wheel embedded in it and the black walnut cover there's the curly maple all these are very consistent in size. That one is just absolutely stunning. And then the flat sawn Telecaster style, as you can see, very pretty in a sense that it's such consistently tinted and a really nice, rich 
uh, amber tone for that real cool vintage vibe in these Fender style necks. So all of them are very nice. After I did three coats of sealer, one with the tinting on three of these and two without, uh, and then I let them dry, okay? Let them set up nicely, which doesn't take long. This is uh, post-catalyzed polyurethane and uh, a sealer, polyurethane sealer. And actually I, have, I put it in my heat room, which is about 95 degrees. And within uh, two hours, I mean, it was fully cured. And uh, I was able to come back and take the uh, Burgundy Scotch-Brite to it, like 400 grit, and just kind of rough them up ever so slightly, take out any dust bumps or things like that. And now they're ready for the top coat. Before we do the top coat, I have one more detail that I need to show you. Okay, the next little detail that we need to do is to the headstock. I mean, what guitar is complete that doesn't have a logo on it. So we're gonna install a logo. Now, many people use water slide decals and although they are very cost effective, I do not like them. I do not like them. Seemed like I was about to roll into a Sam I am. Um, green eggs and ham. <laughs> I do not like them because you always see the little shadow effect or the ridge on the outside of the plastic that you printed them to. And plus they're difficult. Um, they kind of crinkle up if you're not very careful and things like that. So what I use on headstocks is something called a dry ink transfer, okay? Technically, I think it's called a heat activated dry ink transfer. And what these are is basically silk screens that are laid onto in between a couple different types of plastic and they're done in reverse order. In this case, silver and black, the silver goes on first, the black goes on top of it, the black becomes the background outline of these. The last coat that goes on here before the protective layer is placed on the back is a heat activated adhesive. And that adhesive um, will then bond to your headstock and then you can clear coat over top of these and they will look amazing because it's basically a silk screen that is just transferred onto your headstock. It looks pro all the way. So this is what I like to do. Now I order them in silver and black and gold and black. And for these guitars, I'm gonna do two of each. The, typically the one with the gold hardware I would use gold and the chrome or black hardware, I would typically use the silver and black. Um, although I am gonna make an exception. This particular one piece all maple um, neck is going onto a strat body that is gonna have a black walnut top to it. And I'm not sure if I've shown you that one uh, recently, but uh, it's, it's almost done. I just applied sealer coat um, earlier today. So I think with the black walnut and all black hardware that is gonna be on this guitar, I think the gold will just look a little richer. And so that's why I'm going with that. So let me show you how this works. Um, the other two guitars that, use, that are gonna have all chrome hardware, I'm gonna use the silver and black. I just, I just think it ties, ties better and plus those have silver frets, it looks good, you know, whatever, whatever. It's all personal choice. You build the guitar, you can put, you know, whatever color logo you want on it. Uh, but this is an excellent way to do it. So let me show you what I'm doing here. I'll try to zoom in a little closer in post-production, but basically I've already laid the logo on the headstock where I want it. And this is the last chance I have to figure out if it's straight. And it looks good to my eye. Uh, you could draw lines and make sure those lines are going perfectly straight, but you know, I kind of eyeball it. I know that the beginning of my M is two or three millimeters from the edge, and I know my custom guitars is about two or three millimeters uh, from the highest point there. So if I line it up generally in that place, I'm pretty straight. So because the protective layer is on the back, we can lay this 
down wherever we need it to be and then place a piece of tape on top like I did. And now we can heat this area up. Remember I said it was heat activated adhesive. So how do we heat it up, Steve? Well, that, that's a good question. Um, the directions say hair dryer, but if you want to do it faster, get a heat gun. No, no, don't do that. I do have a heat gun, but this one I think I got from Veritas um, has an adjustable heat on the back and it can actually, when it's all the way down um, to the coolest setting, it's a warm that is not so hot that it will burn my hand and it won't ripple the plastic. So that's the setting that I want on this particular heat gun. So I'm gonna take it on high, on the low cool setting, and I'm gonna heat up the headstock uh, for, I don't know, a minute or so. When you think it's hot enough, pull out that protective layer and just gently lay that back down where it needs to go. All right, now we can begin rubbing with our finger to complete the transfer. A little bit more friction, a little bit more heat activation of the adhesive, and that adhesive will bond stronger to the headstock than the paint, the silkscreen paint is attached to the plastic, and that's why it separates. Okay, so we're gonna get that going. And I'm gonna start over by the black small letters custom guitars because that's the spot that's the trickiest I found. So I'm gonna start pulling that off and if I see any letter still sticking to the plastic, I'm gonna immediately lay it back down and transfer more heat. The M right there is not transferring. So get a little more heat on that guy. And try again. All right, now we're clear of that. Now I'm gonna start lifting up the main logo slowly. If I see any part that stays on the plastic, we immediately put it back down. But in this case, we did not. Perfect transfer. Just a few minutes, a little bit of heat, and that is a professional looking logo. Maximum Custom Guitars. So, the important thing at this point is do not touch it, do not rub it, do not feel inclined to clean it or anything else. Leave it alone until you're able to spray at least one coat of top coat on there. What I'll do is I'll spray two or three coats. I'll slightly sand it back in order to, to work it down to be perfectly flat. And I'll build up the top coat on the headstock enough so that I can continue to sand it back so I can't even feel the ink being raised. It'll feel like it's embedded or inlaid directly into the headstock. And that's when, when I'll stop. But that's a very delicate process that I take my time on. But there you have it. I got a couple more necks to, uh, to knock out and I'm gonna do that off camera. I don't think you need to see it again, but there it is. Heat activated, dry ink transfer. If you got any questions, put it in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. I think it's one of the most amazing looking things that, uh, that you can do. When you purchase this, you purchase it by the sheet, okay? So, and that's where the bulk of the cost comes in. So if you can fit 100 of your logos on one sheet, you pay that price. If you can only fit 15, you pay the same price. So it's per logo to your advantage to fit as many as you can on that sh shape. Now I sent the gentleman who made these my logo and he arranged them so he could fit as many as he could on there for me. So that was an excellent service that, that he provided. Uh, where did I get these from? I got these from a place called All Out Graphics, which is out of Vancouver, and they're really, really top-notch quality. Uh, there's another gentleman that I found recently that uh, 
is a is local Colorado to me that also has the technology to do these uh, heat activated dry ink transfers and uh, and I think I'm going to give him a shot next time too for some additional colors that I want to order so we'll see how that goes but for now this is what we got a few hours later Really productive day. All of this was filmed in the same day, which doesn't always happen that way when you're messing with finishes, because sometimes they require overnight to cure. Uh, but I'm using a post-catalyzed polyurethane finish that really a couple hours and it's ready to work. Um, so pretty excited about that. So we got four necks done today. We've got the finishing of the last one, the sanding process of the last one. Uh, we dyed this one, we did tint coats on the other three, we uh, ended up shooting a couple sealer coats over top of that, and then, uh, then we went ahead and uh, just did three uh, top coats at the end of today. And I've got probably two more top coats to put on there. We're going to sand back um, everything, make sure everything is perfectly flat, perfectly smooth. Um, on all sides uh, of the, the neck and headstock. And then we're going to determine which ones are gonna get gloss and which ones are gonna be satin. And we're gonna shoot a couple more coats on each um, with the appropriate one. Now, I've been using gloss, so I'll sand that back a little bit and then the satin will go over top. So, it's I think this one here, the one piece, I think is the one that I'm probably going to do all satin on the fretboard and everything. And then uh, this one's going to be gloss for sure because I really want the, the bling factor on this uh, curly maple to really shine. And then the other two, what I might do, in fact, what I might do on these three all together is go satin on the backs of the neck and then on the front of the headstock uh, keep it gloss and that way it kind of matches the bodies which all the bodies I plan on doing a gloss finish on the body uh, but yet we have the benefit of the satin neck that's a little bit faster uh, to move on although this feels really good the way it is uh, but I think I'll just go ahead and do that the last stage of the necks will be uh, the final level and crowning of all of the frets. But that's all I've got for you today. If you have any questions or comments, just post them below. No matter what you do, start with excellence. Mm -hmm.